Good morning. How are you, everybody? Good, I hope. Aren't y'all glad it's Friday? Two weeks to go and how many days? Praise the Lord. Y'all bow with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, here we are again. Thank you. Thank you for the day. Thank you for all the blessings that come with the day. Let us remember that all those blessings come through you. Let us be deserving of those blessings. Forgive us when we fall short. Keep your mercy on us and your grace. Lead, guide, and direct us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to read you all something. I'm glad it's here. All members of the staff of the house shall conduct themselves at all times with dignity and with respect for others in a manner to ensure appropriate decorum in the deliberations of the house and to reflect the responsibilities incumbent upon a member or staff of the house. Members and staff of the house shall observe decency of speech, gentleness of behavior at all times in the house the gallery, and the lobbies, any rooms and halls adjacent to the house. No member in speaking shall be disrespectful to any other member, and all members shall carefully avoid references to personalities when addressing the house. Those are rules of decorum in this house. I expect each member to adhere to those rules. I am sorry that sometimes the other side does not have the same decorum. Mr. McCall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, those of us in line in the house were just trying to add a little character to that line over there. Uh, house, I mean, House Resolution 1343 is the first one under modified structure. All that's doing is getting, re requesting U.S. EPA to back off of the waters of the U.S. rule, which is the biggest land grab, worst thing happened to agriculture industry building. DOT mining anybody in the United States really there's already been a stay by the courts and this is just a house version of how come it's a bad deal. Ms. Smith. Thank you and thank you for bringing this bill. It came before my committee and we have had for several years now had to make statements such as this to the federal level and the EPA but for record, the state of Georgia has done its due diligence for several years in maintaining its natural resources. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. The state of Georgia way back decided water was important, and we took it upon ourselves to take care of that problem, and we did. And I can't help what the rest of the United States did, but this is killing Georgia's. No more questions. Thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Kidd. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I bring to you the first Senate bill on the calendar, 168, simple bill. I even brought my senator with me over here, so maybe the two of us could possibly get it out and try to teach him to the core at the same time. Uh, it just simply adds the old state capital in Milledgeville, naming it also a historic house. So it'll be on a different register for tourism and or possibly some grant monies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I have a House member bringing a Senate bill when the senator had the opportunity yesterday to speak to that bill. Mr. Jones, is that not true? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There's no questions. Mr. Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee. I'm presenting, presenting today H.R. 1342, which urges Georgia schools system to increase recess time for our children since this is where most of our kids spend majority of their time and influence their life. I 
I wish that I had this bill when I was. <laughs> well, that, that was I can barely remember when I was growing up. But uh, more recess time sounds a whole lot better than sitting in a classroom. Yes, sir. You got no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gooch. You want your house member to go first? No. All right. <clears throat> Particularly respect, that, that one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to respect the house rules. Uh, I bring back this morning Senate Resolution 876. It's a joint high-speed broadband communication study committee, joint study committee between the House and the Senate, dealing with rural broadband concerns all around our state. It's good for economic development. We would appreciate your support on that. And then SB 316, as I've reported yesterday and requested it, is a bill dealing with bingo. It removes the daily permissible prize limitation while preserving the weekly permissible prize limitation as in current law. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Unterman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. It's my honor to be able to come back before you today and bring Senate Bill 278, criminal offenses about pimping, pandering, and keeping a place of prostitution. This is a very simple bill that carries on our work on child sexual exploitation. It actually elevates for adult uh, pimping and pim pim pimping Pimping and pandering, excuse me, it's Friday and it's early, um, to elevate it from a high and aggravated misdemeanor to a felony conviction upon the second. It also adds them into the sexual offender registry. This is our commitment to ending sexual bondage in the state of Georgia. No questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Clark. Did it, did it hurt to stay behind those senators, Mr. Clark? No, no, I did not. Okay. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning. I bring before you House Resolution 1564. It's the uh, first page, fifth from the top. And it's just encouraging schools to adopt sudden cardiac arrest education training. And, and you might be asking why, why we need it. It's because cardiac arrest is the number one killer of student athletes, and with over 74% of students showing symptoms be before they died. Um, by encouraging this training, we will save lives. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. And boy, I'm just so honored to have my senator back. Mr. Bethel. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm on page one in your modified structure section. It's the second from the bottom. Senate Bill 193 closes two loopholes as it relates to domestic violence offenders, ensuring that repeat offenders are treated uh, the same uh, no matter the nature of the, the prior offense. No questions. Does that mean you don't have to come back if I do this? I, well, I, I still have one that uh, Chairman Rogers may let me come see you on later, but uh, we're still working that out. But uh, otherwise, I'll be uh, uh, I'll be glad to come at your at your leisure anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Black. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I bring forth the two bills on uh, page one, the modified open Senate Bill 335 and 336. 335 uh, corrects uh, an oversight in the bill we passed last year. Uh, these are retirement bills that, uh, and the one last year we omitted the option for them to do business with state charter banks. So this just puts state charter banks in. Uh, 336 is a bill that uh, introduced on behalf of the Georgia Municipal Association. One of the services that they provide to their members is they manage retirement systems for each, system, uh, each city. Uh, these funds for each city is kept separate, and uh, they have uh, two different retirement programs. One of them is a defined benefit, the other is a defined contribution. Uh, right now, uh, they have a board for each uh, defined benefit program or for the defined benefit programs and another board for the defined contribution programs. Uh, the real challenge is managing uh, the defined benefits program. The defined contribution programs, the members select their own investments and pretty well run their own business. Uh, this bill will allow them to put uh, both of those under one board. This will reduce their cost, less government, more efficiency. Everybody understood that? 
You have no questions. Thank you. Mr. Albers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, members of the committee. Uh, I come back before you today for Senate Bill 274, uh, which has passed out of uh, your House uh, prior, uh, working with uh, my good friend Chairman Wendell Lillard to uh, remove uh, an old population bill to allow counties over 200,000 people uh, to set their own budget cycle when uh, they know what the tax digest will be. If there are any questions, I will gladly answer. No questions. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, committee members. I, I also wanted to bring back a bill that I presented yesterday, Senate Bill 302, under modified open rule 10th, the number 10. This provides a framework for provider directories with respects to health insurers, make sure they're done on time and they are accurate. No questions. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Martin, Chairman. Mr. Martin, I normally require my own members to come back at least three times. So, There's If you would like me to come back three times, I'm glad to do it. <laughs> My pleasure to bring to the podium Mr. Mullis. Mr. Chairman, it's such an honor to be with such esteemed members today. Mr. Chair, I'm speechless. <laughs> My good friend, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, all, all house bills on the floor today. Can, can I interrupt just for a second? Sure. I just got a comment from uh, my mentor, Mr. Earhart, and he said that, that would have never happened. <laughs> <laughs> the problem there is you had Balfour. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. He, he's only taller than me. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate you allowing me to come before you today. On the first section, uh, Senate Resolution 1027, it's a joint music uh, study committee for the economic value in that, and I think we're we uh, had an attempt with uh, Representative Reeves this year, and uh, he's going to handle this for me, too. i got several to talk about, if that's okay you with you. You just keep going. We'll All right. Uh, Senate Resolution 1038, it's an alternative fuel infrastructure study committee. As you know, many large fleets are starting LP and other type of alternative fuels, and we need to figure out how to fuel them up along our highways and byways. On the next page, Senate Bill 350. And this is our fireworks bill, and I'd like to commend Senator, excuse me, I apologize for that, uh, Representative Chairman Battles for all his work on all the fireworks issue and his team. They've done a great job. And that is the, uh, uh, this one is the, the um, enabling legislation for the Constitutional Amendment that is resolution, Senate Resolution 558, which dedicates the tax revenue, the uh, excise tax revenue for trauma, uh, fire services, and now for 911. It's a good, I think it's a good fit for the taxes on that. Dangerous, uh, but very popular item. And then Senate Bill 402, and that is uh, the narcotic treatment program, methadone clinics. We have uh, four times as many in this state as many other states, and we're trying to <laughs> see if we can strengthen the regulations and the licensings on that through a study committee. You and may have questions I... for the chairman. Uh, one comment. Would, would you expand a little bit on the fireworks? Have we got every, everybody on the same page on that thing? Well, we, we're, we're trying to get there, and everything looks better. And, and again, we've cooperated together, and I know that we all have a little difference of opinion, and that's the beauty of our system. So we're, we're close, and this is a... Uh, this may be it. Who knows? Well, I'm awfully glad to have the House perspective in this bill. Is there a team effort here? <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you much more. Uh -huh. I don't really know what they did to the bill. 
I'm just glad they passed it, you know. <laughs> yeah. That that was from last year. We're glad you passed it. Yeah, this improves it. A lot of local control in it, and that's what I think most people are looking for. And no changing more, hours. No more questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and let me know what I can do for you and my little old committee in the Senate. I try not to introduce a lot of bills. I'm. I <laughs> Mr. Stone. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. It's an honor to be back here again. Uh, I've got two bills for your consideration on under modified structure on page two, um, starting with the new bill, SB 269. All this bill does is tighten up Georgia's anti-sanctuary city law. Uh, it does that by requiring certification annually that there are no local government policies supporting uh, sanctuary uh, of illegal aliens. Uh, the, um, it comes to you with uh, input from GMA and ACCG. We've uh, perfected the bill and I urge your favorable consideration. Be happy to answer any questions. No questions. Next bill. The next <coughs> bill is SB 262. Uh, this is the uh, bill from our judges, which deals with disqualification uh, and shortens the uh, degrees of consanguinity or affinity from six to three. Somebody ought to ask him a question just because he can say that word. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Close your eyes and spit it. I'm sorry. We weren't listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ligon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I have uh, a, one bill and a resolution under the modified open rule. First, Senate Bill 206. This establishes a procedure whereby a tenant or a new owner of property can determine with certainty if there's a water lien against property and it addresses a problem where people have been saddled with water bills of the previous occupant of the property. And then Se Senate Resolution 730 encourages the, uh, the DOT, the DNR, and our Coastal Regional Commission to work to further develop the Coastal Greenway, which is a 155-mile bicycle path that runs along our coast and would connect our state parks and other points of interest. Mr. Earhart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Legan, I, I like what you're doing here with 206. I've recently been aware of an issue with these same water systems with respect to those who lease uh, or, or rent properties, and yes. these systems have this scam going on where they'll They'll wait until that individual leaves, and then they'll, there'll be a break on the, the property owner's property or a leak there, not in the inside of the tenant's facility. Right. Or, but then they, when you have no recourse, and they're taking advantage of a segment of my constituency. That's and, right. And they, they follow them to, they can't turn their water on at the next place, when, and they won't go after the owner of the property whose responsibility it is. It is. Right. If, I don't want to slow your bill down or anything like that, but I'd like to have a conversation with you, perhaps a friendly amendment sure. as, we, as we walk forward. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That'd be fine. No further questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Chandler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. H.R. 768 is the first one on your sheet. And this is a request for a study committee on mandatory reporting. This comes out of juvenile justice and came about as a result of some concerns last year. Mandatory reporting has not been reviewed in 26 years. And as you know, this is an important protection for our children. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I bring before you Senate Bill 263. We spoke about it yesterday, which is allowing law enforcement, retirement law enforcement officers on a local level permissive state not to interfere if the localities would like to award that 
service revolver and their badge as part of their retirement. And I bring before you Senate Bill 331. That's a legitimation of uh, parental rights. So when someone rapes a woman, he would no longer be able to continue to terrorize them. Mr. Chairman, also I had the benefit of being able to move five of the bills out of our subcommittee yesterday that were House bills. I appreciate favorable consideration on both of these bills. Ms. Abrams. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hi. Uh, Senator Stone, can you talk, Senator Thompson, can you talk about why a law enforcement officer who is retired would need to retain their badge? I understand possibly why they might want to retain their weapon, but my concern would be why they would want a badge that's no longer valid. Sure. Um, on a state level where you have correction officers, GSP and so on, that already happens. What they do is many times they put it on their wall. Um, it's, it's just mounted as part of a token. We had a chief of police in Bartow County, Tommy Culpepper, retire after over 30 years. He wanted to be able to receive his service revolver as well as his um, badge to put on the wall. Local city attorney said, we're not able to do that. My interpretation is that we receive state funds to get the weapons, so you'll have to dispense of those through the state. All this does is permissive saying that we're, the state will not stand in the way. If the local wants to be able to do that, they can. One further question. Is there something that demonstrates that that badge is no longer valid uh, that happens upon their receipt of the badge? That's not addressed in here. Thank you. Yes. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to present to you Senate Bill 333, which is 11 down on page one under modified open rule. Mr. Chairman, this bill deals with out-of-state nonprofit corporations and an issue regarding how currently the code does not provide a good way for out-of-state nonprofit corporations to change their domicile and move their residents to Georgia. This bill would allow that, and uh, I'd offer, be happy to answer any questions or explain further. No questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sharper. Good morning, Chairman, members of the committee. I bring you House Resolution 1253, which is the second one down on page one. Uh, it is encouraging local boards of education, non-public elementary and secondary schools, governing bodies of charter schools and public re recreation facilities to render instructions on dugout safety to youth athletes participating in the sport of baseball and to construct protective dugout coverings and other purposes. And this was inspired by a young man that was killed last year uh, while sitting in the dugout. And so as a coach myself, uh, we really work hard on teaching the guys how to hit and catch, but we need to step up a little bit and do more uh, dugout safety training. So that's what I'm here for this morning. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Van Ness. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I am before you today with a last bill on the first page. It's Senate Bill 208 regarding the city of Stonecrest. This provides for a charter and allows for a voter referendum on the ballot. How large a city will that create? 50,000. No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you uh, Senate Resolution 114. It's on the first page, modified rule. It's about the sixth from the bottom of that section. It's a, it's a joint study committee. It's a joint entrepreneur and resident study committee. I thought we'd bring the wisdom of the House to the Senate because we started this about two years ago. And as a Senate study committee, there was tremendous support and interest. And then we just got busy um, with all that, learned how important it would be to to uh, explore the ways to advance startup companies and entrepreneurial sh entrepreneurship in Georgia and how the state can be a, a strong partner, help out, as well as find ways that we need to get out of the way to, so that those people that are starting new businesses and bringing those to Georgia can um, can catapult themselves and create more jobs. And it's a joint study committee. No questions. Thank you all. Have a good day. You, you got another one in here? I, 
I'd love to if I could love to talk better if I can find it. Do you see it, Chairman? I was looking for the opportunity. Nope, it, it, this is Hunter. Sorry. I can speak for my brother, mm. <laughs> cousin. No. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good afternoon. Or good wherever we are in this. <laughs> Okay, you know starting next week, things will be a little fluid as far as we go. And let me make one other comment. We have had just a rash of study committees introduced, and, and I know that they're important to each in individual in here that does it, uh, but there, what happens today at 12 o'clock? Folks, you don't need to be spending your summer and your spring out here in those study committees. You need to be pounding the pavement and knocking on doors. And I don't care what party you're in. Uh, Y'all keep that in mind when I'm mean to you and don't let something out. All right. This will be setting the calendar for Monday, the 36th legislative day. Under modified open, SB 274, any opposition, it's on. Under modified open, SB 302, any opposition, it's on. Under modified open, SR 876, any opposition. So, under modified open, SR 955, any opposition? Under modified structure, SB 262, any opposition? It's on. Modified structure, SB 263. Opposition, comment. I, I don't oppose the underlying bill, but I would request a one day delay so I can offer an amendment to the Rules Committee for consideration. The, the amendment would simply be that right now the state allows you to retain your badge, but that's a limited pool. We would be expanding this to 159 counties, 580 cities, and other jurisdictions that may have law enforcement. And I think it's important that we affix to those badges some demonstration that these badges are no longer valid for the purposes of law enforcement. Under the... Uh Meta's rule, I give everybody up until day 36 the right to ask for a day's delay, and I will grant that. Thank you. All right. Under modified structure, SB 278. Any opposition? So. Modified structure, SB 316. What? Any opposition? <laughs> Thought maybe you had your microphone on. It's the first time I've heard anything from y'all. <laughs> Mr. Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since I've been here, I've tried to keep my eye on these video poker, video gaming machines, video bingo in this case. And what I've seen happen several times, and I've asked lawyers and tried to figure it out, there's a change on line 17 of the bill, <clears throat> and then there's a change on line 32 through 35 with the bill. And the change makes no sense. And what I've seen happen before is that there's case law out there that says that you can't do certain things. And so we'll see a meaningless attempt to change in the statute 
And the result is that our arguments made in court that now you can do something different because the legislature changed the statute. And I've done my best to try to get an explanation for that so far, and I haven't. That's my objection to it. I don't know that it, it does anything useful other than allow video poker, video gambling things to expand. And of course, the object of the bill that one would say might be legitimate on line 24 is we're going from allowing $1,500 to be one in a day to $3,000 to be one in a day. And that's not what I had in mind in church mingo game or the firefighters that I wanted to do this for. I don't see the use for it, and that's my objection. Objection noted. M Mr. Powell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, the the amendment that he was talking about basically prohibits it that uh, any video type poker machine would be able to be used in the in the bingo games. So what this was was a preemptive issue to try to stop anything or somebody coming in or a company coming in to try to use these uh, video type poker machines like this is what happened over in Alabama. So this was a preemptive measure to try to stop that before it could ever be dreamt up. Any other questions or comment? It's on modified structure SB 350. Any opposition? It's on. How many bills Mully say you had four? Eight. He had by himself. That's it. <laughs>